Chapter Twenty Seven of the Pocket Measure by Pansy. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Twenty Seven: Measuring Sacrifices. Following Mrs. Spafford around during the days when these business changes were taking place was an undertone of doubt and anxiety about mission effort in general and her own share in it in particular her old friend's keen stinging sentences had remained to burn was it child's play did the lord look with sarcasm on it all and laugh at their pitiful little mimicries of sacrifice i will laugh them to scorn were the bible words which seemed also to start up and haunt her she did not look them up and follow out the connection and thus comfort herself she had little time for actual study for a few days so she simply went about her many duties with puzzled face and troubled heart when during intervals of care she dipped into the bible for a few minutes she found herself following out the commission go preach teach all nations be diligent in season and out of season present your bodies a living sacrifice earnest words intense words fully as keen and piercing as any the returned missionary had uttered she grew to feeling that she had not even been half in earnest when it really came to the question of sacrifice how had she shown any personal knowledge of it as the weeks and months went by the perplexities of the subject did not lessen she found herself buying sparingly perhaps she might almost have said grudgingly whatever could not be classed among necessities the pretty carpet which she had thought of with pleasure when she was mentally adorning mr johns's room cost her actual size what was the use of carpets anyway boys and girls in africa china and india perishing and she buying carpets and when one morning mr johns asked and obtained permission to bring his nephews out to spend the evening with him as she made preparations to have a dainty or two added to the evening meal she felt perplexed over the additional expense even the very lumps of coal which she threw on to the grate in the bright parlor cost her a twinge and she said to herself for the hundredth time what is right and where does wrong commence we might sit in the dining room they called it dining room winter and summer by courtesy but you will remember that in winters at least it was also a kitchen i like to have those young men come up to tea and i like to make the table inviting and this room is as pretty as a picture in which to receive them but i could sacrifice all these likes if i am called upon to do so only it would be sacrificing other people's likes also am i called upon to make other people's sacrifices for them and if not how am i ever to separate myself from other people meantime her spiritual life was not without its bright hours she had grown deeply in fact almost painfully interested in mr johns a middle-aged man who had buried the wife of his youth and had since been homeless perplexed though she was with what appeared to be conflicting duties she was not sufficiently confused to give over the most thoughtful care and kindness toward this homeless man and certainly he seemed to appreciate it he grew daily more interested in matters which were evidently of absorbing interest to mr and mrs spafford he was beginning to be almost as regular at church as they themselves and for a few weeks past he had joined them at the front door or at the little gate or perhaps at the corner and gone with them to prayer meeting he always came downstairs for evening worship and he always lingered for morning prayer surely these were cheering signs mr johns was not a heathen it is true in the common acceptation of that word but mrs spafford's morbid state did not reach to the height of ignoring the individual value of his soul in the sight of god that it was a morbid state at least in part she became almost convinced as time passed still there was enough truth in her difficulty to make her unable to get away from it the bright-eyed plain-spoken missionary who had so confused her sense of the fitness of things had long since gone on her way sought after by missionary societies in all directions 
to tell to their eager ears the story of her own life which certainly was full enough of sacrifice though this she apparently did not realize but the effect of her intense words spoken in haste remained it was finally to mrs temple that she told the whole story one bright winter day when she and young warren went to spend a few hours with that lady the fact is all the perplexity came to her with tenfold force surrounded as she was on every hand by evidences of wealth and expensive tastes the very carriage with its luxurious cushions and handsome horses which had been sent to wait upon her and baby had given her a questioning twinge thinking it all over she presently turned the conversation in that direction and found herself telling over to mrs temple her missionary friend's excited words there were tears in the elder lady's eyes as she listened but there were smiles on her face i've been over the same ground she declared to mrs spafford's immense relief i know just how it must seem to you just how the words and thoughts which they suggested have stayed with and tormented you never mind dear don't grudge the unrest they have caused you they will bear fruit meantime there are two sides even to your earnest friend's words she from her standpoint sees plainly one side but not the other i think she feels and talks very much as the lord jesus christ would have done had he turned away in despair and disgust from those poor fishermen who thought they were leaving all to follow him what did they leave after all what sacrifices did they make yet they thought they were making great ones and in what infinite patience he bore with them and led them along step by step until the time came when they counted not their lives dear i don't think they would have been ready for martyrdom that first day when he called them from their nets poor human sight would have felt utterly discouraged with them many a time between that day and the one in which they went up to him through fire and blood so the church is growing some of our dear christian ladies have but just heard a faint echo of his call go ye into all the world though it has been sounding for centuries there are many of them standing now on the threshold dazed with the echo scarcely knowing if it can possibly mean them and seeing sacrifice and burden where one day they will count it all joy and only he can seem to bear patiently with childish footsteps and wait for growth and strength besides dear mrs spafford there are two sides even to their dresses and bonnets sometimes i happen to know the private history of one of that very group of bonnets which your friend saw and deplored it was bought at an uptown store where a pretty young girl is just struggling up into position trying amid great competition to establish herself to secure mrs jason ward's custom to make her a bonnet of such material and in such a fashion that others of mrs ward's set would look and admire and follow example was an advertisement for the struggling young woman which she will not soon forget indeed i sometimes think that that very bonnet is going to bring that pretty new milliner into the kingdom then beside her sat mrs mcchesney in an elegant new black silk she read a report that day you will remember when she referred to sacrifices i could barely hide a smile at the smallness of my own thoughts i was wondering whether she had really felt it a little sacrifice to have that dress made by mrs dormer a widow who is a neat and skilful sewer and is trying hard to secure work such as will enable her to keep her children together and educate them she made this dress did it well is capable of doing well and yet i know that mrs mcchesney likes to go to lawrence and newcomb's old established house they have always done her work and suit her exactly without any trouble still she didn't go there and what is the result why ladies of her acquaintance said to one another did you know that mrs mcchesney's new black silk was made by mrs dormer she must have a very high opinion of her work if she gives her such an elegant silk as that and forthwith custom pours in upon mrs dormer it is as good as a hundred dollar advertisement to her and i will tell you in confidence 
that mrs dormer brought me around a five dollar bill only last week as a thank offering to the special fund in our foreign missionary society i know mrs mcchesney is more interested in that society than in any other said poor mrs dormer she herself had never thought of the heathen twice in her life but she continued so i thought i would bring it for i do feel so thankful to her she is coming to the next meeting mrs dormer is you understand and who can tell whereunto this may grow now that is a glimpse of the other side i don't say that it is or it isn't the best way to manage these things but what i do say is that the lord sees the heart and little seeds of loving-kindness to one's neighbor whether he be next door or across the ocean may be in many hearts unknown to us unknown to those grand missionaries who have gotten above us so far that they see all the glory of the work and the honor of being allowed to toil but not so high up that they can see into each human heart and accept the petty sacrifices and watch the growing seed and wait for harvest still said mrs temple as the talk went on there is her side too and we must not forget it there are thoughtless expenditures among wealthy christian women there are hundreds lavished where tens would do that cannot be denied and we do well to look thoughtfully and prayerfully at it from this missionary's standpoint and by realizing what a ridiculous sarcasm our lives present to her get a glimpse of what motiveless and unconsecrated expenditure must look like to god who gave himself for souls that is it said mrs spafford setting war down again on the rug and standing before her friend her face aglow with feeling leaving all these people who have plenty of money and with whose expenditures i have nothing to do how am i to regulate my own life i am in great confusion then she dropped back into the low easy chair and led on by tender questioning began to tell all about her trivial perplexities the new carpet the extra dishes even the parlor fire and the nephews two sides dear friend said mrs temple still smiling you will need to learn that by heart when the disciples were commissioned to preach the gospel to every creature they were to begin in jerusalem now think a moment suppose you instead of going over on that rainy afternoon two years ago and helping to reconstruct not only mrs evans's kitchen but her home oh yes i know all about it mrs evans is also a friend of mine remember but suppose instead you had worked a collar for the store which would bring eventually a dollar into the treasury of the lord in actual dollars and cents how would it have compared how much in dollars has mrs evans been worth to the mission band her influence dating from that day how much may she be worth in the future what may her husband do i think he has commenced grandly did you know he subscribed ten dollars to the young men's fund for bibles for mexico and you know surely that he believes you and your husband were the means of showing him christ do you believe you could have done it by saving your time and your money for the foreign mission treasury then i think the lord has important work for mr johns to do and your pretty home yes and the pretty parlor and all the purity and peace of his surroundings may be the master's cords of influencing drawing him as for those two nephews i don't believe you know that they are in mr temple's bible class and that they are evidently giving serious thought to the all-important questions the older one charlie told my husband about his visit at your home and about the delightful evening which you gave them and a hint of some thoughtful earnest words that you spoke to him under the gaslight he admitted to mr temple that if he thought he could be such a christian as you and your husband were he would like to be one i tell you dear the lord knows you knows just what place he has set you in just how many people you can touch with your influence and just what he is going to do with them all and he loves the cause both at home and abroad more than you and i can but what about the sacrifice said mrs spafford after a thoughtful pause 
during which her face had lighted greatly i don't quite understand that give till you feel it is the sentence i read the other day that should be taken as a motto by all the christian world i don't know how to do it as i have been telling you my actions seem to be so mixed with other people that i cannot separate them how am i to sacrifice for any cause mrs temple bent toward the rug and gave herself up apparently to the pleasure of a frolic with war his happy shouts and evident appreciation of the fun drawing his mother's pleased attention when her gaze was riveted on him with the mother love shining fully in her eyes mrs temple said suddenly what a heavy sacrifice your life has been during the past year for the sake of this one little boy how many nights have you sat by his crib how many hours have you walked the floor with him in your arms how many comforts have you gone without for his sake in short how continually you must have felt the weight of self-sacrifice for him can you compute it mrs spafford a quick telegraphic dispatch from the heart of one woman to the other was the immediate result of this sentence then the mother bent and kissed her baby i do not feel the utmost that i can do for him to be a sacrifice she said with deep feeling because i love him so do you mean mrs temple can i think do i think you can so love christ that whatever sacrifices of personal ease or comfort you may make for his sake will become so much a joy as to cease to be claimed under the head of sacrifice i indeed there is a higher plane than that of sacrifice there was much more talk but i cannot give it to you its sum is embodied in mrs spafford's words as she wrapped war's cloak around him and tied his gay cap under his chin thank you mrs temple you do not know what you have done for me this afternoon i don't know myself yet but i feel sure that i am a great deal richer than i was when i came then immediately mrs temple you need not have ordered the carriage for us we could go home by car mrs temple laughed pleasantly are you afraid dear she said that to luxuriate in a carriage instead of being uncomfortable in a car is not making use of your opportunities for sacrifice save your car fare for the mission might box and ride with a clear conscience john on his way up for you dropped mrs perkins you know she doesn't get rides often and needs them john is going to stop for her on his way back and bring her home so you see you may safely enjoy the carriage mrs spafford responded by a happy little laugh i don't think anything about comfort or sacrifice she protested i was just planning to stop on the way and do an errand do all the errands you want to mrs perkins will be in no haste to get home and john will make love to war with all his heart while you are gone notwithstanding her protest mrs spafford found her heart rejoicing over the fact that she could see work that christ would own even connected with that luxurious carriage had he not said unto one of the least of these mrs perkins ranked among the least as the world looked at it but she was assuredly one of his own war was left for a brief minute cuddled among the cushions talking to john while his mother stopped at one of the great stores summoned the carpet clerk mr johns and directed him to bring the nephews home with him to supper then she hastened home set the parlor aglow with beauty with the aid of a large bouquet brought from mrs temple's greenhouse then beguiled phyllis into entertaining war while she made cream muffins for tea new light had dawned on her pathway new meaning there was in the verse whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do do all to the glory of god she saw new ways of doing it she was gleefully happy over the muffins End of chapter 27chapter twenty eight of the pocket measure by pansy this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter twenty eight then and now what an immense book the history of a human life would make 
probably no one will ever know how large a volume it would be for no one will ever write it i have lingered over the story of the beginnings of married life to this my friend mrs spafford she is so dear to me and her early trials and triumphs are such vivid pictures in my heart that i love to linger over them but time hastened therefore i warned by the growing chapters will ask you to look in upon her busy life for the last time nearly ten years from the day in which you made her acquaintance not in the pretty little box of a home those quarters grew too straight for the increasing family it is on the same square however the spaffords found themselves much too attached to their surroundings the ties of the neighborhood too strong to be causelessly sundered so it stands on the corner below a large handsome house plain it is true but it is the plainness of exceeding taste and care rather than that of accident perhaps the most noticeable feature is the lovely lawn that spreads itself abroad in almost uncity like greenness and beauty grasses and ferns and flowers cluster here all summer in radiant freshness lovely beds of violets are scattered here and there lilies of the valley in their early season hide under broad green leaves while in shady nooks certain beauties of the woods thrive exceedingly to prove the falsity of the popular notion that none of these wild wood treasures will bear transplanting and petting on the opposite corner is a twin house the ground distinguished from their neighbor across the way only by a lavish wealth of roses during june the houses themselves are as nearly alike as the same architect and builder could make them and i presume you can readily guess that the evans family occupy the latter one the neighbors of years ago are neighbors still i want you on this bright winter afternoon to go with me to the meeting of the young ladies mission band you will meet many of the old friends there and some new ones and get perhaps a better idea of what is doing in that branch than a half day's story from me could give you it is not necessary to climb the hill to the old stowell homestead the parlor served its time doing its duty nobly and has retired into private life again for six squares away from the two stone houses where our friends live is another new building in point of fact there are many new buildings for this part of the city has grown so rapidly during the last six years that it cannot honestly lay claim longer to the name suburb but there is one pile of brick and mortar which is the building above all others around which the hopes and plans of many centre it is large and in fact rather imposing looking and bears over its central door in large letters this brief statement young ladies band temple street church to the initiated these words tell a great deal and as for the uninitiated can't they inquire this building is the property of the temple street church it holds within its ample walls a reference library on missions a general library of carefully selected volumes a ladies parlor handsomely furnished where women and girls may be sure of meeting at all hours of the day some christian women who will greet them cordially introduce them to the points to which they may need introduction give them any needed help as regards work or home or friends in short set them in the way of helping themselves a ladies committee room just across the hall where some of the various committees of christian work are apt to be in session on almost any day of the week a coffee and lunch room for women only constantly presided over by skilful young women who have been taught how to prepare wholesome and inviting food a young ladies parlor carpeted and curtained and seated tastefully a parlor organ at one end a center table with bible and hymn books and numerous side tables with work baskets and a sewing machine near at hand this last is where the young ladies hold their monthly gatherings and downstairs the largest room in the building with bay windows at front and side in which of each glitter in gilt letters the word what not 
the fancy store belonging still to the stock company formed more than eight years ago every other room in the building is connected with the benevolence of the temple street church save this one this is rented at a fair figure and paid for in quarterly advance payments by the members of this unique firm they are still firmly resolved on not mixing things business is business and benevolence is benevolence true they find no fault because the managers of the building choose to use the rent paid them for this room to swell the number of volumes in the library they have no desire to curtail the benevolent enterprises of the temple street church on the contrary they rejoice over each one they are grateful for the bestowal of the committee room and the parlor and the library and the upper parlor where they hold their religious meetings this is benevolence they gave their mites to help build each of these they constantly help to keep the wheels in motion but the downstairs front room means business they are workers they have enlarged their borders the store is open now all day long from monday morning until saturday night always excepting wednesday and friday evenings when occur the regular church prayer meetings well salaried clerks are in constant attendance but the numerous partners keep a sharp lookout and hold themselves carefully posted as to all that goes on connected with the firm that it has paid and is paying you need only glance up and down the well-stocked room to be sure of i shall not even venture to whisper to you what have been the net receipts during this past year the fact is it is a business secret what firm of any importance cares to noise abroad its financial power yet that some people understand it is evident because you may hear it repeatedly affirmed by leading business men in the very heart of the great city that they should not hesitate to trust the what-not to any reasonable amount it is true this may be owing in part to the fact that the firm in question never ask one cent of credit from any business house anywhere their rules in this respect being as strict as when they invested with laughter and trembling their first six dollars and seventy-five cents well i did not propose to have you linger in the store you are invited up to the young ladies parlor where the meeting is in progress at first sight it will not impress you at all as a religious meeting the machine is hushed it is true but needles and scissors and thimbles are flashing and gleaming in busy fingers and tongues are moving almost as steadily mrs spafford is seated at the central table and the bible is open before her mrs evans is at her right pencil and notebook in hand every other lady in the room is sewing or crocheting or knitting or cutting these two mrs spafford and mrs evans it will be remembered are not young ladies but there is a singular fact connected with their history thus far not a young lady belonging to that band has discovered apparently that these two are any older or are ever to be any older than those who rank among young ladies they have held to them with a calm persistence that has so shamed old father time that he really has retired into the background leaving no wrinkles and as yet not even a suggestive gray hair and every lady in the church knows that these two motherly matrons are main arteries of the young ladies band mrs spafford though with an open bible before her repeats instead of reads this sentence ask of me and i will give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession and without a pause of a moment mrs evans adds the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof and addie stowell says thou shalt inherit all nations thus the story grows the wonderful story of god's own promises which are found to belt the earth proving by his mighty word that all the nations of the earth shall yet praise him it is laura bacon who has dropped the bright wools she was sorting and slipped into a seat before the organ just as the triumphant chorus of verses is concluded she touches the chords and with one consent they chant 
the lord reigneth let the earth rejoice let the multitude of isles be glad thereof declare his glory among the heathen his wonders among all nations o come let us worship and bow down let us kneel before the lord our maker at the first note of the song the busy hands drop and with the closing strain the ladies kneel and mrs evans's voice leads them into the very presence of the god of the whole earth it almost seems as if the day were near at hand when all the inhabitants of the earth shall worship him declared addie stowell when work had been resumed i have been so astonished over many facts while getting ready for this meeting that must certainly mean good news from china said mrs evans with a smile i believe you are her special representative for to-day oh china is simply wonderful you ought to have appointed every one of us to represent her and then we couldn't have begun to do her justice i don't know about this general summary that we are supposed to give in january why we can't begin to glance at the wonders that are doing well just a glance is about all we can give but i think if you remember that we are to glance backward as well as forward you will succeed in impressing us by the power of contrast yes am i remember it and it was that very thing that overwhelmed me why mrs spafford i didn't know that less than forty years ago there were only six chinamen converted isn't that awful it is harder for me to realize that any of them are converted now declared a gay young girl i don't know much about the chinese only their faces look so funny and their ways are so unlike ours it doesn't seem as though they could be christians do many of them come to the light you know i have just joined your ranks you must wink at my ignorance and enlighten it fanny said mrs evans laughing addie can you encourage her in regard to the chinese i should think so why there are fifty thousand of them connected with christian churches only think of that over thirteen thousand of them are communicants and fanny carley how much do you suppose those church members give a year for the cause twenty thousand dollars just think of it heathen indeed i wish some of them would come over and teach our civilized heathen how to give mrs spafford how much may i say i am just bubbling over there are dozens of curious incidents that i'd like to tell save them for february ruled mrs spafford you know we give the entire meeting to china then and i can see by minnie stewart's face that she thinks the chinese don't compare with the mexicans this suggestion brought a chorus of eager voices to the front every one of the girls had been at a very recent date to hear that queen of mexican missions mrs rankin four copies of her book were in the missionary library and had been carefully read since the excitement about her wonderful work had reached white heat and the girls were therefore on the qui vive to give information at least such was the case with those who represented mexico while the others were equally certain that these should be held to the rules and give only a summary well declared minnie we are willing the summary is astonishing enough especially in the light of contrast remember how miss rankin worked to get one bible over into mexico and how she rejoiced when that feat was accomplished and then think of the protestant churches scattered over it to-day and the thousands there who are followers of christ this very sentence produced eager words from one and another in confirmation of the remarkable changes in that land which a few years had wrought and at last mrs spafford was again obliged to call them to order i don't think it can be that our time is up we are just hurried because essie is determined to get to india declared minnie stewart as she laughingly retired to the background well india is fully as startling in its story as china or mexico can possibly be affirmed the earnest-faced young girl whom they called essie don't you know when we were reading dr judson's life we concluded that no other mission land could be more hopeless than india looked then 
now think of there being seventy-eight thousand people there who belong to jesus i tell you girls that number is simply glorious mamma laughed at my enthusiasm when i found it out i was a little ashamed of the way in which i shouted but it came over me suddenly and i just broke my thoughts oh 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 i said what an immense throng there is going to be in heaven when india alone is ready now to send seventy-eight thousand still the more i studied the matter the more evident it was that there was a great deal to do yet why some of the sentences in the book i was reading sounded just like sarcasm though they were not intended for that for instance it stated that there are now in india two missionaries for every million of inhabitants and that this was a very good number mrs spafford what do you think of that when you said the other day that our pastor with a congregation of a thousand to look after had far too much to do just what i thought before essie said mrs spafford smiling that we expect more of our pastors than they can accomplish with such large fields and that we are awfully neglecting india as well as every other mission field yes declared a champion for china i am glad you put in that last mrs spafford i don't think india compares with china for instance in this need why that missionary who visited at auntie's last summer told me herself that where she was located the number of people that one missionary had to reach if they were reached was the same as though there were a minister in new york city and one in cleveland o and none between she asked me how i should enjoy having my minister have such a field as that thus the talk went on siam and africa and japan and persia and syria had each their special champion eager to give contrasting figures and striking bits of news constantly was their leader obliged to suppress the enthusiastic young hearts hinting that this was the day for the general outlook only and that each field would come up in its turn for special notice only once did they break the line of actual review of facts to romance a little over what the future might bring them this was when they reached the last month of the year and syria was called for then all eyes were turned with a sort of tender eagerness on the blushing face of lena bacon mrs spafford you will certainly let lena talk as long as she wants to pleaded two or three voices and mrs spafford smiling albeit the tears were very near the surface declared her willingness to listen to whatever lena had to say but she blushing smiling could at first say nothing at all the simple truth was she was on the eve of passing beyond the realm of mere saying into the actual personal doing in the far-away land ay mrs spafford's mission band were to have a missionary of their very own sent out from their home and hearts and in the strange sweet providence of god this was none other than lena bacon she whom you will possibly remember as one who declared frankly on the day of this band's organization that she did not believe in foreign missions the lord holdeth the hearts of his people lena was despite this childish folly one of his own and in his time he set the very inmost longing of her heart of hearts on the work abroad and called her to prepare to drop seed there and she was going in her youth and beauty sacrificing so it looked to others with no meagre hand since she had everything to leave that this world can give but never did young heart sacrifice more loyally or joyfully and mrs bacon her mother had moved step by step during this term of years from an actual opposer to a silent looker-on then to a faint and distant follower then to one who read in silvery voice and well-chosen sentences beautiful reports about sacrifice and gave annually her hundreds without knowing that they were gone or caring greatly what they did then suddenly had stepped into the very forefront of sacrifice learning by the deep throbbings of her mother heart what the word meant 
for she was giving her only darling and she did give her not without a struggle at first not without counting the cost with tearful protests again and again and again but she had already come to know that sacrifice for christ is sweet and that he has a special and very tender place for those who give to them their best so now where her body and in a degree her purse had been for several years the workers in temple street church recognized that she brought her soul and in a few months more lena was going not alone oh no End of chapter 28Chapter Twenty Nine of the Pocket Measure by Pansy. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Twenty Nine Good Measure. Not alone, in any sense of the word. The all reaching promise, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world, had sounded down to her through the ages, and felt to her heart as though he who is the same yesterday, to day, and forever had spoken the word but yesterday to her individual need not alone as regarded human love and care for she had been chosen by one who counted it a special and crowning mercy of the master whom he served that just she and no other in all the world had been called to walk with him on his life's journey are you interested to know who this other was do you remember the nephew charlie and the muffins for tea and the extra lumps of coal in the grate and the buffetings of satan which mrs spafford endured on their account when he whispered in her ear to what purpose is this waste these lumps of coal might have been saved and thus the money which must now be taken to buy other lumps have been dropped into your mite box to swell the general fund his wretched attempts to appear as an angel of light were long since silenced by a word from the master which mrs spafford took to him as her answer in the morning sow thy seed and in the evening withhold not thine hand for thou knowest not whether shall prosper this or that or whether they both shall be alike good and now behold he had indeed prospered ay and given already a tenfold harvest for it was charlie the nephew who was going in a few months to carry on her work right in the centre of the field while she worked still at home only a few months before he had graduated and had been ordained to preach the everlasting gospel truly there are times in which god proves that a day with him is as a thousand years looking back upon the story of her past mrs spafford marvelled sometimes that even god could work so fast or bring such wondrous things to pass not the least among her joys was the fact that the one who had quietly borne all the expense of charlie's education and outfit for his faraway field was the carpet clerk mr johns he is my contribution to foreign missions the widower was apt to say with a humorous shake of his gray head when the church hinted its desire to share some of the honor with him charlie is my contribution mrs spafford was always asking me to give to foreign missions the very money that i had been saving up for charlie i wanted to please her and i wanted him to have the money and so i just made up my mind to lump it charlie belongs to me ah yes with limitations long before this had mr johns recognized and bowed before a higher ownership both for charlie and himself but with a price and the day in which he and charlie stood together in the church and gave public recognition of this eternal ownership was one of the happiest in mrs spafford's life could she do other than rejoice that he had said to them in private i told the lord mr spafford that you and your wife had brought in this worthless old chief as well as the younger one who i think will yet bring others with him the lord knows it is true and he knows that with you to show me how i mean to try to go home not entirely empty-handed there was no danger of it 
more than one gem already sparkles in the crown set aside and waiting for that gray head now during this long retrospect of ours the young ladies missionary meeting has gone steadily on as i said they ran off their track with lena long enough to launch out in a dozen questions as to what she meant to do about this and that and the other and she as entirely and happily at home with them as though they had been her sisters in the flesh gave ready answers and took sweet counsel with them realizing that there was between them a bond of union stronger than death and strengthening with every passing day this talk in no wise unfitted them for the ten minutes of prayer in which nearly every lady in that room gave audible expression to her love for christ and his cause and her desire that their special treasure lena might be upborne by his everlasting arm then they sang blessed be the tie that binds and the january meeting was over how do you get it to sound so little like a meeting questioned an interested visitor one day why i mean you know the absence of all formality is so striking they just talk away as though they were having a good time and yet they are thoroughly well prepared it cannot be just a chance conversation which they hold yes it is declared mrs evans that is if you please to call it so the young ladies prepare themselves with great thoroughness taking time and care and then the mere words in which they clothe their thoughts for the meeting are as much chance as yours are when you remark to me that it is an unusually cold day as a matter of fact you have observed the weather before this consulted a thermometer it may be compared the weather report of this date with the corresponding one of last year in other words you have perhaps prepared yourself to give an intelligent and correct estimate of the weather but the words in which you make the statement are entirely unstudied i understand the visitor said but still i don't see how you ever get them to study up and be ready nor how they contrive to appear so natural and unconstrained about it when they are ready they will not study until they are interested and have something to study for it is the result of long training mrs spafford has simply been indefatigable in that as in everything else that she undertakes and she has had mrs temple to consult and lead her on her custom for years had been to give a mission station to a certain number of girls for three months they are supposed to post themselves thoroughly about that station and whatever question we may chance to ask of them concerning it if they cannot answer and it is answerable they are expected to be ready with the item the next time they meet us at the end of three months they change each taking another field in this way all the girls except the quite new ones have had each of the stations so of course they know a good deal about them and there is always a sort of pride in standing up for the country to which one happens to belong for the time being as for the unconstrained they feel no constraint so of course exhibit none they have been trained to talk on this topic exactly as they discuss the weather or the fashions or the last book they have read you notice that they continue their work except during the strictly devotional exercises and the talk is frequently interrupted by a call for the scissors or the canvas or the blue or red or green silk mrs spafford after careful study became convinced that this informal way of managing the matter allowing the interruptions that would naturally occur in common conversation was the best way of helping the girls to feel at home and informal it has worked well now i have given you as i promised just a glimpse of the young ladies band it could really be only a glimpse for i have neither time nor ability to let you at once into the inner workings of this carefully planned and skilfully officered scheme no general of an army planning his campaign could work more steadily patiently and with a more single eye to victory than did the mature brains that had taken hold with these young things to do battle for the lord to be sure they had many helpers now among the young people themselves 
a few years really makes veterans of people who are in earnest and a number of those who had taken hold of the work as quite young girls remained as mature young ladies to drill with the new recruits who were constantly gathering many had married and gone out from them it is true but enough of the old material remained to keep the business part of the enterprise from ever being the ponderous and somewhat hazardous experiment that it was when mrs spafford first put her shoulder to the wheel meantime that lady's afternoon work was by no means finished with the close of the meeting she hastened home as soon as she could break away from groups of talkers who all had questions of immediate importance to press she had a good reason to make haste for she was well aware that another missionary meeting was in progress which was liable by this time to need her immediate attention i trust you have not forgotten young warren spafford he has arrived at an age in which it is not easy to forget any boy who is within reasonable distance and young warren was by no means the sort of boy to sink into oblivion no meek and quiet spirit was he but a vigorous loud-voiced quick-witted wide-awake fellow as you will be likely to find at eight years of age he was a boy who developed constantly in the line of schemes daring ones intricate in their nature were constantly appearing to him to be worked up some of these plans were practical and others were decidedly and hopelessly the reverse but of this last he would never be convinced by previous experience each individual plan had to be carefully tried before he was ready to abandon it his last experiment had been a missionary meeting among the boys suddenly projected on his mother without word of warning three gatherings had been held and with a code of laws that to say the least was original and a program that was unique enthusiasm was still at white heat his mother looking on wondering whether this was really seed springing up on fertile soil or a dream that would come to naught did what she could to encourage the small people and bided her time if i had only planned it for him she told herself smiling over some of the quaint plans which she had not made perhaps it might really have developed well but how could i plan when the queer little fellow started it up suddenly apparently full-fledged never mind out of the mouths of babes he has ordained praise perhaps this will grow to his praise one thing seemed certain that if he lived warren spafford would in some way fulfill the hopes of his babyhood for if his enthusiasm could be said to centre on any one thing and hold itself with an ever-increasing fervour that thing was the world of missions standing at the front window of the house opposite her own was a pale-faced hollow-eyed discontented-looking woman if you had been near to her you would not have had to look very closely to trace lines of unrest many and heavily marked on her white dreary face she had aged in the passing years far more than the other ladies which possibly you will not think strange when i tell you she is jenny coleman and that she has come to live with her cousin mrs evans that last sentence gives you a hint at least of family disunion and trouble speedy as mrs spafford's transit had been her neighbor had reached home before her and was upstairs now ready to have mrs coleman's ceaseless observations on passers-by poured at her there is callie i wonder why she persists in wearing that cloak it is too short for the present style and never became her very well either but then i know why she wears it just because she is too penurious to get another that is just like callie spafford and it was just like callie howell i should think that she might remember now that she is a rich woman but it is inborn that trait in her character she is just as careful and economical as when she was first married and lived in that little old house do you remember that day we met her at the store and she wouldn't buy asparagus because it was so expensive well i met her downtown yesterday and pointed out some elegant hot-house grapes to her 
they were so lovely they fairly made my mouth water and do you believe she wouldn't buy them she said they were out of season and so expensive that she must not look their way the idea of her talking that way and her husband a partner in one of the largest houses in the city mrs evans laughed once her face would have flushed and her eyes flashed over this sort of comment on her friend but she had learned at last to live away above jenny's unwearied tongue accounting it as not of the smallest consequence save to her own bitter heart what the poor tongue kept saying i suppose she thinks she must be conscientious in the use of money even though she has considerable she said pleasantly oh conscientious that's all nonsense vehemently declared mrs coleman she was born so and cannot help it i tell you it is just as natural for her to save it as to breathe and i must say i think it is an exceedingly unbecoming trait it did well enough when she was poor but in her present circumstances it is very noticeable you are not naturally that way eva i don't think as a girl you were in the least penurious but you are so fond of copying callie spafford that i tremble for you it is growing real hard for you to buy anything that you can do without such a low poverty-stricken position to take when there is no matter of occasion now when we consider the fact that mrs evans was daily spending money for the care and comfort of this her homeless cousin she might perhaps be pardoned for feeling the plain words a trifle but they provoked from her only a smile they were actually too foolish to feel oh you must remember that mr and mrs spafford frequently prove the fact that they have money by the way in which they give it if they don't buy spending she said speaking lightly oh give i am not likely to forget it that is another hobby of theirs which they ride to death i think it is quite as silly and extreme as the other the idea of the spaffords giving two hundred dollars to the collection for foreign missions in addition to all that she does in the band it is perfectly absurd millionaires don't do much more than that it is nothing but pride scrimp and save to see how much they can give that is another thing in which you and dane are copying as hard as you can i don't see how dane can do it he seems to be independent enough about some things you never were independent eva but i wouldn't tie myself down to any copy if i were you that is really what i am trying to do said mrs evans sweetly and simply he is our pattern you know dane and i both want to copy him very closely oh pshaw said mrs coleman giving an impatient twitch to her shoulders her whole face gathering in a frown she called all such words can't after a moment of irritable silence she went back to the charge i declare i believe callie spafford is a monomaniac on giving and she is bringing up her child to be just like her he has a rosewood box perched on the mantel in his own room and he took me in to see it the other night and talked to me about his tenths as largely as though he were a merchant prince for all the world like his father earning money he is too like the child of a day laborer well callie was a queer girl in every respect and she has certainly made a queer woman then the flow of talk was interrupted by a long-drawn sigh and after a moment she added in a low dreary voice it is a strange world think of you two girls beginning life as poor as you did and your husbands in just these few years on the way to being rich men while i am a miserable wrecked woman no home no husband no friends and the talk ended as it so often did in a burst of sobs poor jenny coleman it was of no avail to attempt consolation mrs evans knew this by past experience only too well at such times words only seemed to have power to irritate she was deeply painfully sorry for her cousin but there was no truthful way of saying so without leaving at least the inference that much of the fault of her wretched life was her own no husband 
not that the grave had closed over him mrs evans could not fail to see that the unloving wife would have been better pleased if it had the unwearied exertions of dane evans and mr spafford had at last prevailed and the wreck of the once perfect gentleman will coleman had consented to shut himself inside the walls of an inebriate asylum whether he would ever come back into the world of men a saved man god only knew one of the hardest features of it all was that his miserable disappointed wife not only had no hope of him but did not seem to want to have thinking of it all of the eagerness of this young couple to be rich of the strides towards it which they thought themselves making of the family across the way and the almost unbroken tide of prosperity that had flowed in upon them since the hour when they held to principle rather than to bread if there must a choice be made thinking of their own signal leading and of the wonderful tense which god had given to both families in these last years mrs evans thought but by no means said there is that maketh himself rich yet hath nothing there is that maketh himself poor yet hath great riches was that verse written for the purpose of giving to the world a history of these three families when will the world by observation learn wisdom mamma said young warren his cheeks very red his eyes aglow we made a thank-offering to-day i told the boys about your thank-offering in the band you know and they liked it and they each gave a cent more than their tents and you know the gold dollar that uncle dane gave me for my birthday well i gave the half of that for a thank-offering we gave it because we are all so happy and having a grand time wasn't that a good reason mamma a thoughtful pause during which the bright dark eyes took on a gleam as though within the soul was born some great resolve and then he said mamma i am going to pray to jesus to make me well enough off when i am a man so that i can give half of my money for thank offerings i mean half of what is left after the tents are taken out of course i'd give them they belong but i want to give something you know besides what belongs and there'll be enough things to be thankful for won't there looking down into his eager face and smiling eyes the mother stooped and kissed him once and again and again and repeated aloud to herself rather than him that old-time promise having this seal i have spoken it i will also bring it to pass give and it shall be given unto you good measure pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom for with the same measure that ye meet withal it shall be measured to you again end of chapter twenty nine end of the pocket measure by pansy recording by trisha g thanks for listening